Hey, hey, hello there, and uh, welcome back to this uh, Woman Wednesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming today live as we do every day, noon to 2 Eastern. We're bringing you the best guests, but we try to give you the woman's perspective on Wednesday every which way we can. And we got one of the best of them right now and coming up next. Uh, Jan Dabowskis joins us now. She is a uh, health care expert. And she's vice president of health insurance innovations. And uh, Jan, thanks for joining us via Skype today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. Hey, how are you? So, Jan, um, there's a lot, uh, a lot of going on out there in the world, especially uh, with the 2020 election related to health care. I think that's the number one issue. Uh, what are the key issues facing us um, with our health care system these days? Well, really, the number one issue is affordability. We at Health Pocket recently ran a survey that said 85 percent of Americans feel that health care costs are just too high. Health care is becoming unaffordable. So there's all kinds of um, proposed solutions out there. And that's what we're seeing in some of this, um, the debates and with the different candidates is they have different ideas about how do we come to a better solution that's more affordable for consumers. But really, what consumers need is affordability first. Um, yeah, of course, everyone likes affordability. But now we see the results of the primary last night where Bernie Sanders comes out on top. He's talking about complete and utter free health care for all. That's a little too affordable, isn't it? And don't like unions and people with Cadillac plans get really hurt under that? Absolutely, absolutely. Medicare for all is uh, really, you know, supposed to uh, be very expensive. So $30 trillion over the course of the, the next 10 years, that adds up to something like $10,000 per person per year. Um, Bernie's plan would shift those costs to higher wage earners. So the lower wage earners wouldn't actually pay that much cost in their taxes. It would all uh, move to those who uh, pay more in, in tax and earn more, um, but also to corporations. And so what we would see is healthcare would appear to be more affordable for those um, who earn less income, but it would actually become a much greater burden for those who earn more. So that really doesn't solve the issue of affordability. And then what it does is it creates a whole new system for 300 million people, most of whom are already pretty satisfied with the health insurance they have. It is interesting that Pete Buttigieg He's coming in a close behind and he's looking for Medicare for all, you know, more of a public option, which is a very different program than Bernie's Medicare for all. So, yeah, when I hear about these crazy numbers and the amount of money that it'll cost for Medicare for all, um, Mayor Pete is a little like Bernie light. I get that part. Yeah. Um, but what's the real number of Americans that actually need the government to help them and give them insurance? That's, that's a great question. And what we also hear is that there's 30 million people who are uninsured. Uh, you know, there's more people who are underinsured because they have higher deductibles. But let's focus on those 30 million who are uninsured. Um, about half of those people, 14 million, qualify for an ACA subsidy, which would make the health insurance much more affordable, or they also qualify for Medicaid in their state. So if we take 14 million people out of it because we solve that issue, we get them on an affordable ACA or a Medicaid plan, then what you're really talking about is something in the range of 15, 16 million people. Um, Five million of those are illegal immigrants. Uh, so now we're talking about 10 million people who really are choosing not to buy a health insurance plan. And I think that we can do something to solve that situation for those folks, right? We can develop a Cadillac, uh, a, a catastrophic plan. We can um, provide more wellness services um, at discounted rates. There are things that we can do to help those 10 million people who really don't have a solution today. And uh, we're going to have to have you back, Jan. I want to thank you so much. But uh I've also been reading about a new plan um, that Medicare has for re remote patient monitoring um, where yes. the government's given out some technology and stuff. I think that may help to lower costs by more well care for some of these people. But we got to have you back. Thank you so much. Uh, Jan Dabowskis, uh, healthcare expert extraordinaire, joining us right here on Liquid Lunch. Now uh, on Wednesday, as you know, we refer to it as Woman Wednesdays. And... Uh, 
We're joined by one of my favorite guests on Women Wednesday. Zen Sems is here again today. Hello, Zen. Thank you for joining Hi. us again for Thank Women you. Wednesday. So um, you are a uh, model. You're an actress. You're a producer. Uh, you recently produced The Protocol, short film on mental health awareness. And uh, you're a super mom, philanthropist, all that good stuff. But you know what goes on behind the curtain down in Hollywood. And we had these Oscars last week, and there's all stuff I've been talking about, the platform and Brad Pitt and who wore this and who wore that. But under that whole undercurrent, there's another story in there that the, the, the network actually turned down some woman-centric advertising. Tell us about this. So Frida is a company that focuses on postpartum products for women, for babies, and their ad was pulled from the Oscars because it was too graphic. Now, it feels like a really, you know, big setback that they're pulling an ad focusing on women, postpartum products, and babies, essentially, and they're putting it in the same categories as guns, ammunition, sexually explicit material. I mean, the Oscars, their ratings were really low this year, but they continue to make decisions that are upsetting the public across the board, from snubbing women to now taking a very important commercial for postpartum products, women's products, and completely removing it off the air because it was too graphic. So um, I saw the photo. We just showed it there. Um, it didn't look that graphic to me. You think there's something deeper? to women in Hollywood like you think there's something deeper there? You know, it's basically a shadowed woman um, who's pregnant, and I guess, you know, we all know a lot of things happen to women hormonally, mentally, physically after having a child. What was, do you find this objectionable or too racy or? No, the problem is, is that the, the ad opens up 3 a.m., baby crying in the background, woman coming out of the bed and going to the bathroom in mesh undies. And she was trying to use a squirt bottle, which... I don't expect you to know what that is, but it's feminine products. And they pulled it because it was just too graphic. Now, I don't think there's anything else going on. There's no big conspiracy. But I think that the Oscars, the Academy Awards in general, are putting their focus on all the wrong areas. This is, Frida is a company that is up and literally, it's one of the up and coming um, platforms for female hygiene products. And Chelsea Hirsch, Horn, the CEO of this company, found a platform that she believed was very important. Period, end of sentence, was a short film that won the Academy Award last year, and it was a short documentary that focused on female products and so, the um, female anatomy. A lot of talk about women um, directors being snubbed in Lots this year's of- uh, uh, Best Director category. Also, um, this was an Oscar winner. Um, and now her ads are getting snubbed. Correct. Um, my eyes were more focused on Kristen Wiig. Um, Kristen Wiig. Oh I didn't my goodness. understand if the dress was part of the gag. Was it a joke? Was it I a know. real? I couldn't tell what you. Was under it. It was. <laughs> uh, it was a strange, strange occurrence to me. Kristen Wiig's dress literally looked like the female anatomy of a. I don't know what that is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. And, and they I, all and, said it on the air. It's not. They it's all not, said it on um, the air. They said, what is she like, wearing? She looks like a, a piñata to me. And I see yeah. a red piñata. Well, you know and, what? Uh, you know what? Piñatas. She's a comic, right? Yeah, she's, yeah, she's Saturday a, she's Night a Live. Comic, she's And I thought her segment was good and bad. You know what I'm saying? Her and, her and the other Maya girl, they were, Maya Rudolph, they were kind of funny. But I was kind of laughing at the dress the whole time. And, uh, you know, no one's ever laughing when Zen Sams is here. The dress is Because uh, she's the best. She knows what's happening in Hollywood. She knows what's happening to moms and women around the world. And uh, she's also a great philanthropist. So uh, thank you very much, Zen. Thank you for being here for hour two. But don't go anywhere. Uh, Consuelo Vanderbilt Costin is going to come to us next. And uh, she's been out there for the Oscars for the last few days. And uh, she's going to give us her take on behind the scenes at some of the big Oscar parties right after this.